JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 17th. I am Harlan Pisuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but two of the other major currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian session Thursday. It gained only against uh, JPY, while it was found virtually unchanged versus CHF. The main gainers were AUD, NZD, and GBP in that order. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and uh, the other uh, safe havens, yen and franc, combined with the strengthening of the risk linked Aussie, Kiwi, and Looney, but as well as the euro and the pound, suggest that market sentiment continued to improve following headlines and reports with regards to progress in negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that um, major EU and US indices were a sea of green, with the upbeat uh, morale rolling into the Asian session uh, today. Now, the, yesterday, the main event on the economic calendar was the FOMC decision with the committee hiking rates by 25 basis points for the first time since, 2000, since, since 2018, but as it was broadly expected. The highlight, though, was not the rate hike rather than, um, than the updated uh, dot plot. Remember that uh, the December uh, one pointed to only three quarter point hikes throughout 2022, but now the dots were more aggressive with the median, uh, with the median for this year pointing to seven liftoffs, including the one delivered. In other words, excuse me, in other words, officials see six more hikes, which means that they are willing to, to keep pushing the hike button at each of the remaining gatherings of uh, the year. At the press conference following the decision, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that the economy is strong enough to weather those rate hikes while maintaining strong hiring and wage growth, adding that if they conclude that it would be appropriate to move more quickly to remove, to remove accommodation, they will do so. Now, the US dollar strengthened somewhat at the time of the decision, uh, at the time the decision was known, but came under selling interest during Powell's press conference. With the Fed being much more hoggish than in December, this points to a sell the fact market reaction. After all, seven quarter uh, point liftoffs uh, for 2022 were already priced in by market participants heading into the meeting. In other words, investors were already over hoggish and exceeding their expectations was a very hard task for the Fed. Now, besides hopes around the ceasefire between uh, Russia and Ukraine, this may have been another supportive factor for equities. Moving ahead, although we, switch, we switched our stance uh, over equities to neutral, Conditional upon a resolution in the crisis in Ukraine, we see decent chances for stock indices to continue drifting north for a while more. Yes, aggressive tightening means higher borrowing costs for companies as well as lower present values for high growth firms. But yesterday's market reaction suggests that the concerns on that front may have already been fully priced in. For equities to slide again due to monetary policy developments, the Fed needs to appear more aggressive than the market anticipates. After all, according to a Deutsche Bank study, historical data suggests that tighter monetary policy has often been accompanied by solid gains in stocks. Now, as for today, we have another major central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of England. 
When they last met, officials of this bank voted 5-4 to four for a hike by 25 basis points, with the four dissenters calling for a 50 basis points increase. Since then, we've been highlighting that only one member needed to be convinced for that to happen, for a double hike to be delivered at uh, this gathering, and the accelerating CPIs for January indeed added uh, speculation uh, on that front. However, this was the case around a week before Russia invaded Ukraine, with events unfolding since then, market-wise raising concerns over the global economic performance, and especially in Europe, something evident by the tumbles in the euro and the pound. Thus, with all that in mind, we don't believe that the Bank of England will now stay willing to hike by 50 basis points uh, today. According to the UK overnight index swaps forward curve, forward curve market participants believe that a quarter point hike uh, will be delivered. Therefore, if this is the case, we will be eager uh, to see the bank's assessment on the war in Ukraine and how this is affecting their future course of action. Similarly, with the Fed, investors expect the Bank of England to deliver nearly seven quarter point hikes by the end of the year, and it will be interesting to see whether officials' view and language will match those expectations. Now, as for uh, the rest of uh, today's events, during the Asian session today, we already got Australia's employment report for February, which came in better than expected, allowing, allowing us the traders to maintain bets over several rate hikes by the RBA this year. Later in the day, Eurozone's final CPIs for February are, co are coming out, and as it is usually the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while from the US we have the housing starts for the same month, which are forecast to have increased somewhat. Now, tonight, during the Asian session Friday, we have another major central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of Japan. However, with Japanese inflation still running well behind the rest of the world, we don't expect any material changes. Once again, any reaction in the yen is likely to be insignificant. Japan's CPIs for February are also coming out, with the core rate expected to inch up to 0.6%, confirming the aforementioned statement. Now, from New Zealand, we get the GDP data for the fourth quarter, with the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate expected to have rebounded to 3.4% from minus 4.7%, something that uh, will take the year-over-year year one up to 3.3% from minus 0.3%. At its latest gathering, the RBNZ uh, lifted interest rates by another 25 basis points to 1%, and also steepened its rate path projections. So, with that in mind, a rebound in economic activity during the last quarter of 2021 may add credits to officials' view and perhaps encourage Kiwi traders to add to their uh, long positions. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.